Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel today. We're diving into the story of one of the most famous kings in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar. You might have heard his name before, but trust me, there's way more to his story than just being a powerful ruler. So who was Nebuchadnezzar? Well, he was the king of Babylon, which was kind of like the New York City of the ancient world. Super powerful, super important. Nebuchadnezzar took the throne in 605 BC. And under his leadership, Babylon became the center of everything, at least in that part of the world. He expanded his empire and conquered a bunch of lands, including Jerusalem. But Nebuchadnezzar wasn't just about conquering other nations. He was also a big-time builder. You've probably heard of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Some people say it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And then there's the Ishtar Gate, which was basically the grand entrance to Babylon covered in these amazing blue tiles with pictures of lions and dragons. But here's where things get really interesting. Nebuchadnezzar isn't just an historical figure. He's also a major character in the Bible, especially in the book of Daniel. The Bible gives us a closer look at his personality, his dreams and his struggles. And let me tell you, this guy went through some seriously wild stuff, including a face-to-face -face encounter with the power of Almighty God. Let's start with one of the most famous stories about Nebuchadnezzar. This super weird dream he had. Imagine this. Nebuchadnezzar is lying in his bed, trying to sleep, but keeps on having this crazy dream about a giant statue. The statue's head is made of gold. Its chest is silver. Its belly is bronze. Its legs are iron. And its feet are a mix of iron and clay. Sounds like something out of a fantasy movie, right? Nebuchadnezzar wakes up totally freaked out and calls all his wise men but none of them can figure out what the dream means. Finally, he brings in Daniel, a guy who's got a special gift for interpreting dreams. Daniel explains that the statue represents a series of kingdoms, with Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon being the head of gold. But here's a twist. Each part of the statue represents a different empire that will eventually replace the one before it. Basically, it's a prophecy about the rise and fall of empires. And then Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar about the rock that smashes the statue to pieces, representing God's kingdom, which will eventually take over everything. So yeah, not exactly the news Nebuchadnezzar was hoping for, but it definitely gave him something to think about. Next up is the story of the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar, feeling pretty proud of himself, decides to build this massive golden statue and orders everyone in the kingdom to bow down and worship it. But three guys, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, refused to do it because they worship the God of Israel. And let's just say Nebuchadnezzar doesn't take this lightly. So what does he do? He has them thrown into a blazing furnace. But here's the wild part. Even though the fire is so hot, it kills the soldiers who threw them in. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego came out totally fine. Not a single head is burned. Nebuchadnezzar sees this and realizes that their God is seriously powerful. He's left in complete awe. Now let's talk about where things take a turn for Nebuchadnezzar. Later on, he has another strange dream, this time about a massive tree that provides shelter to all kinds of creatures. But then the tree gets chopped down, leaving just a stump. Once again, Nebuchadnezzar is freaked out and calls in Daniel to explain it. Daniel tells him, that the tree represents Nebuchadnezzar himself, and that because of his pride, he's going to lose his mind and live like an animal for seven years, until he learns a valuable lesson. And guess what? That's exactly what happens. Nebuchadnezzar ends up living in the wild, eating grass, and totally losing it for a while. But here's the important part. After those seven years, Nebuchadnezzar finally acknowledges a greater truth, and his sanity is restored. He gets his throne back, but this time he's a changed man. He learned, the, he learned the hard way about pride and humility. So what can we learn from Nebuchadnezzar's story? Well, first off, it's a pretty clear lesson about the dangers of pride. No matter how powerful you think you are, things can change in an instant. And it's all about recognizing that some things are bigger than us. Way bigger. Nebuchadnezzar's story shows us that even the mightiest king 
can be humbled. And that true wisdom often comes from humility. So there you have it, the story of Nebuchadnezzar, the king who went from ruling the greatest empire on earth to living like an animal. And back again. It's a story about power, pride, and ultimately, redemption. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more stories from the Bible. And hey, let me know in the comments, what do you think about Nebuchadnezzar's journey? Thanks for watching and see you next time.